want to bring on former Senate Majority Leader Tom Daschle and Yahoo Finance's Rick Newman now to the program. Uh, Senator, essentially, Cal was just mentioning that, that piece about it's, it's President Biden's job to turn down the temperature and, and him laughing at that, uh, essentially because he has to work with the Congress uh, with members uh, that have been the ones that have really been turning that temperature up. I'm wondering how you imagine President Biden working with some of those members inside of Congress, some of whom actually have already uh, said that they're going to be planning on filing articles of impeachment uh, against him. How does the new president work with a Congress that is filled with some of those members? Well, I think you have to isolate the radical there isn't much you can do with somebody who would be that outlandish this soon, and 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 it's very unfortunate. But there are a lot of Republicans uh, that I think uh, hold real promise. They know we've got to govern. Uh, I think one of the things that Joe Biden can do, and he's very good at doing it, is to include uh, Republican leadership as decisions are made. Invite the leadership uh, of Congress down to the White House perhaps once a week on a Tuesday morning, talking about what they could accomplish together that week in spite of whatever differences there may be. Invite them up to Camp David. Uh, talk about what you want to accomplish for the coming year and uh, use that as sort of the beginning for whatever it is you're going to say you want to do uh, for the country for that particular year. Do as much to include, to organize, to collaborate, to create that environment. Everyone has to turn down the temperature and Joe Biden didn't create it but he can help and he can contribute in doing as much as possible to alleviate it. And I think that's what he'll try to do. Rick, what do you think of, of what Senator Daschle has said? I mean, would that include perhaps even inviting Ted Cruz to a one-on-one -on -one with the president? <laughs> Well, it, it makes me think of uh, the Obama years uh, and when Republicans had control of either one or both houses uh, for six of the eight Obama years. I mean, Mitch, McC Mitch McConnell said outright that his goal was basically to obstruct uh, President Obama. So I would put that question to Senator Daschle. Do you see the Republicans uh, basically just um, wanting to be obstructionists during Joe Biden's presidency as they were for most of Obama's? Or do you think it will be different for some reason? I think that remains to be seen. I don't think that the Republicans are any more unified today than uh, they may have been over the course of the last several years. I, I think in some cases you're going to see a real willingness on the part of Republicans to write a new chapter. Mitch McConnell has started to put space between him and Donald Trump. Uh, I think he wants to do that institutionally. It'll be interesting to see over the course of the next couple of weeks what indication there is, what what evidence there may be that he wants to accomplish something together with the Biden administration. You know, when you think about it, Chuck Schumer, Mitch McConnell, and Joe Biden have about a century a century of service in the United States Senate. That has to mean something. There has to be some opportunity there uh, to create the kind of partnership necessary to begin to govern. Joe Biden laid out just an array of challenges this country is now facing. We don't have the luxury of ignoring them or fighting over them for the next four years. We've got to find ways to address them. So I want to ask about some of those policy issues, but first, let's just get impeachment, uh, the impeachment trial out of the way. Do you think there is a chance the Senate could actually convict uh, President Trump? And would that um, in some way align some Republicans more with Democrats in terms of legislative priorities that would come afterwards? Well, you asked the question in a way that I think you could obviously answer in the affirmative. I, there is a chance. I'd say the odds probably are still unlikely, but I think Mitch McConnell's uh, recent comments are an indication that they are giving it a great deal of thought. I don't think there's any question he's guilty. I don't think most objective observers uh, would challenge that. The real question is, um, is there enough political courage on the part of 17 Republicans uh, to address this issue head on and to put it behind us? Uh, I'm hopeful that is the case, but time will tell. Senator, I'm, I'm wondering how you imagine, in terms of that alignment, a lot of folks have said the Democrats have really provided a, a safe space for some conservatives, for some Republicans inside their party. I'm wondering, and we've been talking about this a little bit throughout the program, how you imagine that the fractional nature of the Republican Party, particularly with this rise of Trumpism, impacting any kind of consensus that might be happening, particularly inside the Senate going forward? 
I think consensus is always difficult to achieve. I served there for a number of years and leader for 10 years, and I can tell you that it doesn't come easy. It really does require a lot of work, a lot of effort. Um, the problem we've had in recent years is more and more members of the Senate believe compromise is capitulation. Compromise is not capitulation. Compromise is the oxygen of democracy. We're going to have to see that compromise in evidence as we go through this very aggressive and ambitious agenda that Joe Biden intends to lay out. It's going to require participation. We don't need unanimity. We don't even need an overwhelming majority. Uh, we are going to need a consensus, uh, and that is going to drive our success on achieving many of these uh, very, very important goals. Would it be to the president's uh, advantage then to try and maneuver around Mitch McConnell via Mitt Romney or, say, Roy Blunt? Well, I don't think you really have uh, uh, an opportunity to do that with any regularity. Obviously, he has to work with the leadership he's given. Uh, but uh, all presidents attempt to, uh, if, if I can use the term, pick off uh, people in the opposite party. Uh, George W. Bush did it uh, when I was leader uh, on occasion, sometimes successfully. Uh, and that's just the, the, the democratic process with a small d. I think, uh, you know, no president is precluded from making the effort. But by and large, as you talk about schedule, as you talk about the agenda, as you talk about the things you really need to do with the Congress, you have to be inclusive of, of Republican leadership, no matter how much they agree or disagree. Senator, we have a pretty good idea what Biden's priorities are going to be during a first year. We know what the relief bill is going to be. There could be some student debt relief attached to that. Then we're probably going to get an infrastructure bill that includes a lot of green energy investing. And then after that, probably tax hikes and some uh, some spending programs. Where do you think Biden might have a chance at getting 10 Republican senators to go along so he can get a supermajority and that vote can get through without using reconciliation? Well, that's a great question. I, I think in all of these cases, there are opportunities. I, I think uh, I, I really it depends partly how he frames the issue, partly about how aggressively he goes after finding those 10. Uh, I think it's important to, uh, you know, I, I, we're, we're, we've talked about, uh, I should say the Congress has talked about restoring earmarks. Uh, I happen to believe that earmarks are a very important tool for leadership, both uh, on both ends of Pennsylvania Avenue. Using leadership uh, opportunities like that, tools that give you more of a chance for senators to and members of the House to buy in, to uh, to feel invested in a piece of legislation, can really dramatically augment your ability to get something done. Uh, I I know there was abuse around earmarks. They have to be, those abuses need to be addressed. But I think it's a very important tool, uh, not only for good governance. I think putting people in charge of decisions like this who are elected rather than appointed makes a lot of sense as long as there's transparency and full reporting. Uh, but I do think that from a leadership point of view, it could be a very important tool to get those 10 or 20 or whatever number is necessary to pass a good piece of legislation. All right. Former Senate Majority Leader Tom Daschle, thank you so much for joining us. Also, thank you to Yahoo Finance's Rick Newman for talking through some of these policy initiatives.